Hello and welcome to Let's Complete Untouchables for the Commodore 64. For those of you who may not read the descriptions, I described this game as one of the worst great games I've ever played, or one of the greatest bad games I've ever played. And there's a reason for that, which I will get into in a moment. Untouchables is a movie time by Ocean, surprise surprise, which was done in around the same time as Batman, which of course was given the subtitle The Movie to make it absolutely perfectly clear for everyone that it wasn't just a random Batman game, but actually a game that was related to the movie of the same name. Much like Batman, this game takes five scenes from the film and makes uh, turns into levels. And not unlike Batman, some of the rather simpler scenes in the film is turned into outright marathon slugfests in this game. I suppose. But whereas in Batman, I think the formula worked extremely well in this game. I mean, if you look at the graphics, you listen to the sound, not the music, the music. It's probably of a very high quality, but it's just... I, I I wish they would have gone with a more modern theme. I know they're trying to stay in, in 30s Chicago and all that, but uh, it doesn't sound particularly good. Whereas the sounds, uh, the gun sounds perhaps are a bit bleh, but especially the item drop sounds and the sound effect when someone picks up evidence that's been dropped are two of my more favorite sound effects in this game. But I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely not the worst looking Commodore 64 game ever made. But the game itself. I like the gameplay of this level. I actually quite enjoy um, the prospect of jumping up and down different boxes and chasing the guys that drop the evidence. The uh, guys in white. What I don't like about it is because they always want to be higher up than you. So if you get above them, they will jump down and then you'll have to chase them. Because we fell down, we were now lower, so he just stopped where he was. If we remained higher, he would have um, gone further up again. He would have gone down and then able to go further up. And that evidence was picked up by someone else, so now we have to chase him. Hourglass, hooray! I'll get, go over the interface in a moment, but uh, because you have to chase those guys high up on the screen, which uh, that means that every other bad guy will come from below you, and they will randomly jump up from below you, trying to hit you. Now, when they hit you, not only do you take a bit of damage, which is perfectly understandable. If that bad guy is a special bad guy that will either drop a weapon, health, or time, or one of these evidence guys, they will not drop what they are supposed to drop because you didn't shoot them, which can get extremely frustrating, especially when you are at 90%, you have 4 seconds remaining on the timer, and you're trying desperately to get that piece of evidence and the bad guy jumps from below into you, so you're bumped into the air, and then you bump into the guy carrying the evidence. Uh, happy times. Yep, I've been there. Yep, I've done that. And yes, I burned the t-shirt. And that is why, that is one of the reasons why I consider this to be one of the worst great games I've ever played, or one of the greatest worst or bad games I've ever played, because the gameplay itself, in most cases, is rather solid, but the way the game has been made challenging is extremely cheesy and cheap. I don't mind being challenged, I prefer games being challenging uh, compared to uh, either walk, walks in the park or completely handhold features, but I don't like when they're being cheap. And the fact is, 
if you have a bad guy jumping into you, then you get bounced away, and then another bad guy may be spawning below you, coming up towards you, and then you bump into him, and then you bump into another bad guy, and then you fly off the platform you're on, taking absolutely massive damage or even dying from it. Which means that you can go from full health to no health in two seconds, and you can't really do anything about it. Uh, the smart asses out there will probably argue that you could have always avoided getting hit in the first place, but that's not always the case because while you're trying to dodge one bad guy, someone else shoots you in the back, you get bounced forward, you bump into a bad guy, you bump into another bad guy, and then you fall off. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's things like that that's I mean, if the game wasn't challenging uh, it would be a rather short experience, and if you just paid, I think this was, I wouldn't know English cost of this, but um, when I bought it, I'm fairly sure I paid 190 Danish core, something like that, so that would be a, a loose change in VAT and all that stuff, uh, 18, 20 quid, whatever. So I mean, if you uh, paid that kind of money for a game, and then you completed in five minutes and you'll probably be rather disappointed but I just wish they would have made it more challenging instead of cheap because this video is what is it mm, 27 minutes something like that and in order to get this footage I have nearly five hours worth of video spent on this game so um, Yeah, of course, because uh, it's not fun if it didn't happen, if you don't pick up either health, time, or evidence in within a short time span, then it will despawn, because that's fun. Anyway, I was mentioning something about the interface. On top left corner, you have the score, which is self-explanatory, I hope, and you have the time. And even though it seems a bit generous, uh, it will, it will be tight, if you don't pick up our glasses. So the right of that, you have the evidence collected, and you need 100% evidence, and we are halfway there. In the middle, there is a health bar, which is very similar to Batman's health bar, except for the fact that the picture of Elliot Ness will not turn into the Joker, but will turn into Al Capone, to signify loss of health. So the more of Capone you see, the more dead you are, and this is uh, an example of what I mentioned before. If you try to stop and shoot the bad guy, he will run into you, so you take damage, and if you don't try to shoot him, he will stop for a second, shoot you in the back, move forward. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously there's bound to be someone out there saying that I could just learn to play better and all that, and that's probably the case, but... This is an opinion piece, as much as it is a playthrough, and I am entitled to have the opinion that I think the game's difficulty is cheap. I understand why it's cheap, but I still think it's cheap. And, uh, yeah. Of course there's an Amiga version of this game as well, and uh, you may uh, argue that I should probably have made a let's compare video, but the whole purpose of the concept of the let's compare videos was not so much to compare to um, games across the platforms. It was more to say this game was very, very popular on one platform, and there was probably quite a lot of people who bought it blind knowing that the first version existed. And the point is, would they be extremely disappointed, or would they be extremely happy in that situation? And in the case of Last India 2 for the Commodore 64, the Amiga version is absolutely some of the, one of the worst games ever made for any system anywhere in the world at any given time. Yeah. And of course, in the case of the Commodore 64, Lotus Speed Turbo Challenge, which is an amazing game on the Amiga, was an absolute pile of unmolested junk. 
on the Commodore 64. So that's why I decided not to make a Let's Compare video regarding this game. I will make uh, the exception, as I did with Batman, and uh, the original Last Ninja, which of course got uh, a version of the Amiga that wasn't actually horrible, surprise, surprise, but uh, not Last Ninja 2. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And the other thing is, because they are very similar, but yet somewhat different, I want to give them their um, own videos. The people who might be interested can decide if they want to watch one, both, or none. It is, of course, entirely up to them. I may or may not do an Amiga version uh, or Amiga video playthrough thing of this game. Um, and the reason it's a may or may not is because the Amiga version is very, very similar, but it's also very, very different and not necessarily good different. Um, yeah. If you get to that point, we'll get to that point. And if you're not aware of uh, Untouchables Amiga, I can tell you for one thing, it's a very, very loud game. Um, not necessarily good loud, just loud. But, uh, back to this game. The level, we are at 80% evidence, so uh, we are almost done, thankfully. And of course, we don't really have the time to chase that guy, but we have to because... There's a guy that drops a hog glass, we need that extra minute. So... As you may or may not have noticed, as we've gathered more and more evidence, the bad guys take more and more hits to take it down, because why not? I was hoping for the shotgun, which is the pink weapon, and it was indeed 40 shots. The different weapons, the amount of ammunition, and um, the color uh, dictates what type of weapon it is, but a uh, very easy guideline is the fewer shots they have, the more damage they'll do per shot, and the more shots they have, the faster they can fire. So. The shotgun, no matter um, how much evidence you've gathered, will shoot the bad guys in one hit. So, 90% now, and we badly need some health, and we probably badly need some time, so... Oh, if we got the health, now we have to fish for an hourglass, because... Trying to uh, gamble on getting the last bit of evidence in the amount of time we have remaining is not worth it. So... Hooray! We now have the time and we have the health and we have a decent weapon, at least 10 shots more. Oh, no, well, now we got the atomic gun like weapon. A lot of shots, but can shoot very quickly. And uh, proper taking chances I didn't need to take, but I was getting a bit desperate because uh, at this point I played this level for about two hours. It kept bumping me off in the most annoying, frustrating, agitating ways, and complete. Hey! Moving on to the next level, the bridge. In this level, if you look at the top of the screen, you have the four members of the Untouchables, and to the right of that you have the time, and then underneath that you have a baseball bat and the score, and further to the right of that you have an aiming ridicule kind of sight, uh, yeah, whatever, <laughs> which is the gimmick of this level. You have to kill enough bad guys until the baseball bat disappears, and then you complete the level. Uh, why they even bothered adding this level is beyond me, but the, the thing is, because you have this uh, side thing at the top right of the screen, 
they didn't bother getting you an aiming reticule, so you basically have to either just do what I do, shoot constantly and move to aim according to where the bullets hit, or follow that uh, very, very stupid obnoxious down the gun sight kind of thing in the top right corner. When you're rolling, you are expanding the area in which you can attack, and um, the area you can attack is very, very limited per roll, so sometimes you may think you will be in range, but you are not. So, one bad guy left to kill this guy. Up there, you need to shoot him. Come on. Shoot him. Change to another member and uh, the, the inactive members will restore health while they are not active. Which is good. Alright, we got the level done. That was quick, wasn't it? Absolutely, completely pointless level. Definitely the filler level. This game. Then we move on to the allies. We are trying to get to the train station in order to get Capone's accountant. And bad guys are trying to stop us and we have to shoot them. And as you can see at the top of the screen, there's a, a timer next to the four members of the Untouchables. And under the timer, there's another baseball bat, and you have to kill bad guys until the baseball bat disappears. Other that, you have to score, and uh, to the right of that, you have the shotgun ammunition. You see, when you are taking cover to reload around the side where the drain pipe is, you can still be shot by the bad guys. So, it is tempted, very tempting to go all the way back. Um, in order to stay safe, because you cannot be hit while you're fully behind the wall. But <clears throat> I found that if you do that continuously, and you uh, allow yourself to whiff a few shots, then you just plain and simply run out of time. So um, you want to try and reload your shotgun, standing just at the side of the wall. But of course, if any bad guys are up, they can absolutely... Um, put a lot of holes in you, and as the, we get further down the alleys, there will be more and more bad guys we have to kill, and they will do more and more damage, because that's fun. The bad guys that spawn can be very, very random, and if you have three or four machine gun guys taking pot shots at you, you can find that one of your members will die extremely quickly. At this point in the movie, there are, um, or at this point in the game and movie, I suppose, there are certain individuals which are plot critical and certain which are not. And if that certain someone dies in this level, then you fail the level. You should do, but you don't actually. On the Amiga version, you will fail it if that certain someone dies. Um, you can lose Ness, which is the uh, leftmost one. The leader of the pack, if he dies, you can still complete the level. Doesn't matter. The challenge, of course, is to make sure to spread out the damage of your different members, and uh, it can become rather tight sometimes. So um, I prefer to just take one or two shots, especially towards the later alleys, in order to um, change my guys around and hope that they will restore some health. But as I said, um, if you with a handful of shots, you are in serious, serious risk of running out of time before you can complete rallies. And if you're sending enough to actually move behind cover and try to restore some health, the timer is going to run out on you. You're now in the last alley. 
of course got the most bad guys and they will do obscene amounts of damage um, as opposed to getting shot at with uh, machine guns it's probably not the smartest thing in the world but it is slow game and I think the damage scaling at this point is a bit harsh but what do I know we are not far from being done with this level so uh, Not great, not bad. Just disregard the fact that I failed this level several times. But let's move on to the railway station. One of the worst levels ever created in any game. Ever. At this point in the film, Elliot Ness has arrived at the railway station and is helping a woman getting her baby carriage up a staircase. He spots Capone's accountant and uh, uh, Capone's accountant's bodyguards open fire because they spot Elliot Ness. And of course he has to let go of the baby carriage and it starts rolling down the staircase and he's it becomes a frantic race to protect the baby carriage and get rid of the bad guys. And uh, uh, the level they've concocted out of that scene has more fail states than lines of code in the game. It's a slight exaggeration, but it doesn't feel far off. Top left corner you have Elliot Ness's health, and the top right you have the baby's health, or the baby carrot's health, whatever. You can imagine if either of those two are drained, then you fail the mission. The bad guys will uh, happily shoot at the baby carriage in order to try and get to you, and you can imagine that that's probably not very good for the baby or the baby carriage, so uh, yeah. If the baby carriage bumps into anything that resembles an obstacle, a solid obstacle, the baby is not out of the carriage and you fail the mission. The baby's carriage is shot, you fail the mission. One of the civilians trapping the baby carriage so it gets stuck at the top of the screen and can't move forward, you fail the mission. The best part about it is that bad guys and civilians in this level are all randomly located, spawned, placed, whatever. Which means that you can't say, okay, when I go to this staircase, then I can anticipate this. No, 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 no. This level, that's the only thing I will bring up concerning the Amiga version, is the Amiga version is in many ways much more punishing, even though as far as I can gather from doing this level uh, a long time ago. Um, the bad guys and civilians are set, so they spawn at the same locations, blah blah blah, all that good stuff. Uh, just a bit of glitch there, sorry about that. And I quickly have to describe the next level because it's quite short. After stopping the baby cars from getting damaged, the last bad guy realizes he's the last bad guy and threatens to blow the head off the accountant. So Stone, the sharpshooter of the Untouchables, has a five seconds to dispose of the hostage-taker. Hostage Done. Um, the problem is if you um, fail that level, you will restart the railway station level all over again. Especially uh, moving on to the final level of the game, in which uh, Capone, based on the evidence gathered from the accountant, has been indicted and his, in the form at least, head hitman, Frank Nitti, is having a showdown with Elliot Ness at the top of the courthouse building. You basically have to shoot Frank Nitti until he tumbles over and you can only do any meaningful hurt to him when he's trying to run from side to side. What you can do when he's standing uh, in cover is to get him to go into cover by trying to shoot at him. That will give you a chance to get into cover yourself. 
But we are closing in on the end of the level and therefore to the end of the game. And uh, my initial opinion stands. This is one of the greatest bad games I've ever played or one of the worst great games I've ever played. And, and now I've completed it and now I got video evidence of having completed it. The game can remain untouchable for me. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye bye for now.